that I'm hoping to get done, all that sort of stuff comes in handy. It's not an exact science, but it definitely gets you in the ballpark. I'm hoping this makes sense. <laughs> right, so I'm going to shove the other die in, mark up another bit of tube. I'll permanently mark these as well. So I've got, you know, proper scratch lines and stuff. And then I've got my cheaters, mate. Right, near as damn it, 90. Near as damn it. Um, I think this one's a little bit under, but it don't really matter. It's just a guide, basically. It's a cheater. So all I've done is, I don't know, can you, are you picking this up in the light? Hopefully. Um, basically, I've just marked my lines. I've just gone over it with a hacksaw. I was going to get the Dremel out and mark all the numbers on it as well, but then I spotted the hacksaw and I've not used it in months. It's going rusty, so I thought I'd give it a go. So, um, how do we use all these? Right. Let's say um, you are trying to do this bit of the frame. I will stick a picture up. <laughs> Just so you know what I'm doing. Um, well, actually, Sharpie. Where did I put him? Sharpie. There we go. So, well, can you see this? Right, so we've got the headstock there. We've got the frame tubes like this, which is, oh God, they're awful. <laughs> and that carries on. What I want to do is basically this bit down here like that. So, um, basically we want to know what that, what this angle here is. Yeah. Um, we're also going to need to know uh, how much tube we need sticking out here to get up to the headstock. And then we're also going to need to know how much tube to get to the next bend, whatever that's going to be. Okay. So, the cool thing about this stuff is you can actually hold it up to the bike and have a look-see. Anything up to a 90, you can kind of put a straight piece of tube up to this, sit one on top of the other, and you can get an idea as to what the, what the angle is. So if I wanted a slight bend and then going up there, you can use this as a cheater. Um, it is only rough, it is not cock on. But I've found that if you underbend it a little bit and then offer it up, you might need to put a little bit more in. So you just stick it back in and bloody bloody blah. Just mark up the tube and the follower as to where it all was last time. Um, or if you're clocking it, you can stick it in the follower like that. So this is in the follower here. And across here, you can put a digital, digital protractor or something like that. Even one of these things will do. You know, just one of the gravity job is you just stick that on your tube and then you can you can get it lined up to where it was um, so it's quite handy for that sort of stuff um, another way of doing it is you could put you could clamp something flat there and something flat there and basically make a box right so I'm not saying it's the best way of doing it but you could have something like that ish can you see that? That'll do, won't it? That looks about right. Um, so obviously, if we was going to be following this, because we'll be using the bigger bend for that bit. So if we were just to stick this hard against this surface and move it up, okay. We know that that bit there is 90. So if you count back, you can kind of get an idea as to what sort of decrees you're going to need. Um, let's zoom you in a bit and then you can see what I mean. Well, I'm not sure if the white paper is going to make it easier to see, but I'm hoping with that and a torch you get to see what I'm on about. So, we have got um, that bend to figure out. We clamp something across the bottom, clamp something up the front. That's ish what it's going to look like. <laughs> right? So if we go hard up on here and get the flat bit of the tube against this surface, this face and then slide it along until it touches down on this one okay then you can look down there and see where the tube hits this this face and that is basically the angle that you're on about um, so if I look at this directly from the top which is sort of hard to do it 
it looks like it's landing pretty much between the 20 and the 30. Um, maybe a tad over. I'm going to call it 25 degrees. So, oh, oh, I'll turn you off. So you know this is 90. So all you're doing is adding on the 25 degrees extra that is going to make that bit go flat against that bit. That's it, basically. So we reckon 90 plus 25 is 25 whatever that bend there is. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's what you would bend the piece of tube up to to try and replicate that angle. It is not an exact science doing it this way. Um, this is how I started doing it. And because with the products that I'm making, it was like doing exactly the same thing, like 100 times. I just made up a cheat gauge. So basically, it's a, a solid piece of metal with a plug on each end, just a, a piece of bar with a, a, a coped bit of you know tube on the end of it or something that just fitted in there and just fitted in there because I knew that this was a given length. That way, I could bend them all up the same. With something like this, it's a little bit more bespoke. Um, a much more accurate way of doing it is um, to use, oh god, where are you? Um, there we go, one of them, or uh, something like that, or um, 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 one of these jobbies. Uh, basically, you get you get these kits where you get that a centre finder, which is just like a, a V. And you get one of these as well, so you can kind of, you know, stick that on there and have the rule coming up where you want it to be, and you can read the degrees off here. Um, but just because it gives us a number, we will use this one. So it's not a very big one, though. That's the only trouble. I mean, if you're looking to try and measure around something like that, you get very little contact patch. Here it's easy because I've got a, a corner to go into. So turn you on. All right, he's already set on zero. So we'll stick him on there. Move him up so he touches. And that is reading 115.3. Um, and here we said 90 plus 25. So I made that 115 degrees just by using one of these. Um, it's not exact. I am 0.3 out. <laughs> But then, you know, these are just like marked lines with a sharpie and then scratched over with a hacksaw. But it does get you pretty bloody close. Pretty close. Um, this only obviously works, you know, 90 or more, basically. <laughs> um, all the dies that I buy are like um, this. Where is it? Oh, there you go. Come on, they're dies like this. Basically, I can bend up to a 180. Um, so what I could do is make another one of these that goes up a 270, or I could do a full 180 or whatever. Um, it's just that I've never really found the need to. This sort of stuff just works a treat. You know, it's good enough for the stuff that I'm doing. If I ever needed to do one though, I've got a die. It's not hard, as if you've just seen, um, to make one of those cheaters up, I don't know, 15 minutes, it really doesn't take long at all, but it is dead handy. All right, let's try and, um, I'm trying to keep everything straight and I'm failing miserably. <laughs> right, you can go in there, you can go in there. You can go back in your roll. There we go. Oh yeah, this thing. Right. Um, I made this in the other video, and a lot of people are going, what's that for then? I don't get it. <laughs> I shall explain. Um, right then. So, the, the way this was made was I had a shim in here. Um, some of that half mil plastic shim that you can get. And then I bored uh, an inch and a half hole straight through it, took the plastic out, so this just clamps down. And if you look at it, if you put a straight edge across it, um, where, there we go, yeah? 
there is no gap it is lovely and flat is that uh, can you see hopefully you can see anyway so it's not finished yet because like I say I need to make some of these um, so these these are a little bit of a cock up on my part. Basically, I machined these down on uh, the lathe to 10 mil and I drilled hole for them. I took all the burrs off and I left them a little bit long thinking I could just sneak it down, you know, to get whatever. And the idea is these are gonna be drill, uh, drill guides. So I'm hoping this is gonna have quite a few uses. Um, this is one of them. So if you was to have a look at the frame, the engine mounts, there's gonna be two blind holes on the frame which imagine something like that but longer threaded on the inside basically shoved through the tube and then dressed up uh, with, with just a flat face showing that's basically what the engine mounts are going to be and then there'll be a plate that bolts into the blind hole and then that's the engine mount hopefully that makes sense so anyway um, I need to get the holes in exactly the right place and vertical or horizontal or you know however I'm going to be and all equally spaced on all the engine mounts I'm doing so that's where this comes in um, this is tall steel or silver steel uh, reason being is I can heat this up to like cherry red and then some and then quench it and I can harden it so once I've gotten to size and I've got some 12 mil stuff coming that I'll machine down to be like a really snug fit in there and then I'll just press it in with a fly press or something um, but then that will basically sit in there and it means that I can center a drill on here and get a, a nice straight hole that just go all the way through it basically um, that way I can get my engine mount threaded bit of bar shove that all the way through weld it dress it up and jobs are good so that's one of the uses for this but because it's also flat it means i can use it for clocking as well and marking up the tube so all these faces is dead dead flush if i needed to mark a tube all the way around for reference say then i can do because it's all clamped on and you just run a scribe around it that's easy enough um, but if this was a straight piece of tube and I eventually wanted it to turn out something like, I don't know, that, where it's, it's a bit of a funny shape, yeah? <laughs> well, this is where I can use the cheaters um, and this block to get the angles right. So I've got a digital protractor jobby somewhere. Where is it? Right, so you've all seen this before. So it is a bit grubby. <laughs> but anyway, I can if this is just a straight piece of tube, say, I can clamp this to it, shove it in the, the tube bender, and I can take a reference. So that is basically zero. Okay? And then I can put my first bend to it. The tube bender is already set zero as far as the, the die goes, that way and that way. Alright? So I know if I shove this bit of tube in and then take a reference off here and just make sure it's zeroed then I'm sitting at the same angle that the die is so I could do my first bend yeah leaving this exactly where it is I can move the tube through the die to whatever clock it over at the desired angle and I can take another reading off here okay and that will tell me exactly what the the angle I've set is and just that way I can mirror it on both sides um, and because this isn't changing and I know it was dead flat and everything else to kick off with it just means all I need to know is where to start my bend and that's where all these little hash, hash marks and everything else comes in <laughs> say we're doing that funky bend um, so down from the headstock then we've got a uh, whatever bend it was that what did we say it was 115 that's 115 degrees and then it's going to come along here for a bit where the engine mounts and everything else goes um which i think there is one going to be needed about there ish something like that um and then it's going to come to the back and it's going to do almost and like a 90 degree but it will be on the, the smaller die okay so to measure all this out this is going to need to be coped 
okay so we know we're going to need to need to leave a little bit there um, and normally the rule is if the closest edge is touching then the furthest edge on that cope is going to be two-thirds the diameter of the tube um, so if you was to draw that coping cross section uh, it would be I don't know something like that ish you get my meaning it's a tube going that way so when you're coping it if you were to draw a line across the deepest point here yeah the distance from there to there is normally two-thirds the total diameter of the tube from there to there that probably doesn't make sense but you'll see it as we go through and do it anyway so we know that we're going to need to have a little bit up here definitely going to need to have two-thirds tube distance so you just like leave I don't know an inch and a half or something whatever it is um, then we know we're going to need to run from there down to where this bend has to start um, looking at our cheetahs uh, we know that the bend starts five millimeters after the follower is engaged okay so if I know I need to have a bend start there then five mil ahead of it I will put a mark on the tube for that's where I'm going to marry it up with the follower okay then we know it's 115 degrees and looking at this one which is the one that we're going to be using um, we've got 10 mil markers for every um, you know and also the degrees so if we was to add all that up uh, what did we say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 200, 215-ish, plus we need another 25, so 215 plus 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and a bit maybe 63 something like that so in total we know that we're going to need 278 mil yeah um to complete that bend so that takes us to there then we know how long this one's going to be we can hold up a cheater and go okay well that's sort of where it needs to be if it's going to be nearly a 90 you know you can kind of do that trick with a piece of tube and kind of get it to where you think it's going to be about right um that will tell you as well what the um how many degrees you're going to be bending it okay so from that using exactly the same method you know where that bend needs to start which will be there so that gives you the distance from there to there okay then because we'll be using a different um die to do this piece i'm probably going to need to make another one of them at some point but this is going to be clocked over at an angle as well potentially so i am probably going to make another one of them just because i can stick it up here as well and have one at either end of the tube um either that will mark it in some way um but then i can move the the thing through the through the tube bender clock it over to get my degrees spot on i could do it where the seam is you know i mean that's the other way of doing it just put it on a flat edge you don't necessarily need one of those um but then uh we know from here if we're going to go x number of degrees i don't know call that a, a whatever it is however many degrees it's say i don't know 120 ish you can work out from the markers on here um, how much tube you're going to need in order to complete a 120 degree bend if that it's not oh, actually it's not going to be 120 is it? it's going to be less than that you dinny <laughs> oh no call it 70 degrees um so we would know from here if we're doing a 70 degree bend we would need 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 10 20 30 
136 ish mil 137 so that there is going to be 137 mil right to get a 70 degree bend and then it's however long from there up to where the, the swing arm tube is going to go does that make sense i mean that's kind of how you work it out you break it down into straight bits and curvy bits and all you're trying to work out is how much you need to bend it by how much you need to clock it by if you need to clock it at all um, and how long the straight bits is going to be on the you know in between the bends that's basically it. This is the worst explanation ever. It does make sense in my head though, but that's kind of how you do it. And you can mark all this up, bend it all up exactly to those numbers, and you should come out really, really, really close as to where you needed to. Um, it isn't as exact science because you do get spring back and all sorts of other weird goings on that you have to compensate for and everything. So there's nothing like being able to take the tube out, offer it up and see are you right, is it in the right place? Or do, you know, do me markers make sense? All that sort of stuff. Um, and then you can always stick it back in the tube bender, set everything to zero again, and away you go. You know, it's, it's not massively difficult, but you do have to be quite methodical with it. Um, I'm hoping that this kind of explains the approach that I'm taking. Um, as far as the job that the the bender does if you look at the inside of this not a ripple to be seen unlike the stainless that i put through it so different material and that stuff was a damn sight thinner wall than this um, but stainless is pretty tough but this is really nice you can feel and just see a little um can you actually the white things behind it about here you can see there is a little bit of deformation where the follower and the die start picking up um, and if you were to measure this it would be very slightly narrower that way than it is that way because you know you are deforming the metal at the end of the day all this was done cold um, but that's basically how I do it no one's going to get that are they all right whilst I'm here I'm just going to remake these cones and I ain't unscrewing that it's just getting chopped off um, everything I'm happy about the jig apart from these bits these are plastic they're Delrin and if I leave them in there when I start welding it's just gonna melt <laughs> so I need some new ones first I need an angle grinder right I saved you the machining montage you've seen plenty of them off me recently <laughs> so we've now got Ali's Ali cones top and bottom just that way I can weld to it and you know it's not going to melt basically um pom 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 right there's uh two little bosses that i need to make which go in here so that bit there where it goes back and sits on this um sort of arm of the the jig here it's basically just a runner for where the spindle goes through and that sets the position of the um swing arm that's the swing arm pivot point is what i'm trying to say um i do have a slug of steel to make them out of but I can't fit it in my chuck. I've only got the internal um, three jaw chuck. I do have a four jaw, but I'm still not that good at dialing it in. So I do have another chuck on its way. I've gone for 100 mil internal and out external jaw, so it's reversible. Um, and that is on its way. It's a three jaw self-centering jobby. So, if that gets here, it should be here like any time basically. So if that gets here, I can whiz those up, then I can start chopping the frame up, which is the next bit. You're gonna like this. But basically I'm gonna do one side and then I'm gonna do the other side and I'm gonna do it up to that point, all right? So um, what's gonna happen, can you hear Jack and his motor revving the guts out of it? Um, that tube, that tube, the tube that goes across the middle, all this lot um, and this lot up to that boss so this is basically just going to get locked off there I'll put the new boss on and then I can remake that tube that runs all the way down there um, once I've got that side sorted then I'll be doing the other side and once I've done that all the bracing will go back into the front 
and we'll be replacing this bit and the supporting tubes that go across it and blah de blah de blah that's the plan anyway um i'm still working it i am pooing myself about doing this chomping it all up and stuff because i don't want anything to move it shouldn't move but i just don't want it to <laughs> the only other thing that i'm wary of is on the inside of this down tube here there is a, a dent there's one in either side um where's the breakaway is it on this one yeah there you go can you see that where are you uh there you go oh hello so you can see there's that bit that's that lot of dimple right there um that's basically where the exhaust goes um so but there isn't one on the outside so i'm very conscious that i can't move where the exhaust ports come out <laughs> And there's two on the inside and two on the outside so i need to do a little quick bit of measuring up and make up like a template i can stick across the front here just so i get the spacing on the tubes right because this can come out any angle i want it to don't really give a monkey it would be nice if it came out wider because i could do something decent with the oil cooler um but i can't go any further in and if anything i, I really don't want to if you're going to have a dimple in your frame best it's on the inside so i might end up coping something into it but you know we'll do a nice tidy job and it'll all be structurally sound and everything but it's little things like that that i'll keep looking at and it's like oh have you, have you got a plan for that bit yet then or no <laughs> but um we're basically there so this is all getting chopped out soon i just need to make up that bit there and jobs are good we've got sirens and everything now can you hear it you can't tell Jack to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this one has mostly been about tube bending. I'll get all that. Um, but there were loads of comments and questions and various other bits and pieces. Just because I had a go at doing it with stainless and cocked it up, basically. I was trying to get it to go round a too tight a bend. What I'm probably going to end up doing, because I've got loads of that tube left over, I'm probably going to shove it through that bigger die just to see if it works out because on the bikes i'm going to be building if the exhaust is the same radius as that front curve which it would be because then it will tuck up nice and neatly underneath but it'll be two of the same curve going into one then i can just use that die to do my headers that'll be absolutely fine that won't be an issue so i'm going to give it another go and see if just having a slightly bigger radius helps it get around that get around the die without kinking um, I will do it cold, I will see how it goes, but I ain't doing it for ages. I've got other stuff I need to be getting on with. Um, if you haven't got a tube bender, there's loads of places you can go, like fabrication places, and just ask them to bend it for you. If you look on eBay, there's loads of people that are selling bent bits of pipe and tube and anything else that you want. Um, so you know if you ain't got one don't worry about it you can still make up your own frames and all that sort of stuff you just need to get the bends that you need the right radius and the right wall thickness and the right od and all that sort of stuff and then you just need to join them properly we will be doing some of that on this so i'll show you the way that i do it again this is not a tutorial it just in i'm just trying to explain everything that i do so you understand why i'm doing it that way if there's a better way of doing it please shout out <laughs> i'm always up for learning new stuff but you know a combination of digital protractors and you know that angle jobby rule thing i've got up there and cheaters and all this sort of stuff i should be able to work it all out and get a good fit up that's cool um as far as coping goes i might have a go at making a coping jig um but i'm quite quick and close at doing it by hand so you know we might end up just doing it that way i don't know we'll figure it out <laughs> but anyway that's where i'm leaving it for this one do hope you're well and staying safe um this is gonna be the last video before new year's so if you're out celebrating the stuff i hope you have a ball look out for yourself though because there's lots of people with covid out um and we will see you again on the next one Later.